Okay, so welcome back. So in this video we're going to talk about uh, two types of systems of equations. So in most cases that we run into, we'll run into where two lines intersect at one point. Okay, and so that each line has one solution that solves the system of equations. But it doesn't always happen that way. So sometimes you might get a system where there is no solution. Or you might get a system where there's an infinite uh, number of solutions. And so that's where we talk about um, cons inconsistent systems and dependent systems. Okay, so let me show you an example. So we got two examples here and I'm going to do the first one. So here, the first thing I want to do is I want to solve these for slope-intercept form. So I'm going to write this in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to move the 6 over and then divide by 2. So that's going to give me y equals um, 1 half x. And this is going to be uh, minus 3. Okay. And then this one, if I do the same thing, I'm going to just divide everything by 3. I get y equals 1 half x uh, minus 1. And so notice these two equations, these two lines, have the same slope, right? And, but they have different y-intercepts, okay? So they're not the same line, right, obviously, because they intersect at two different, they have two different y-intercepts, but they rise at the same rate, right? So they go up and over at this, with the same numbers, okay? So this tells us that these are two parallel lines. So any two lines that have the same slope and different intercepts, y-intercepts, are parallel lines, and we know that parallel lines never intersect. So, as far as a solution to the system of these two equations, it doesn't exist. There are no solutions. So, this is what we call an inconsistent system. Okay? There are no solutions. Okay? So, that's one. Now let's look at the second one. And let's do the same thing. Let's solve these and put it in y-intercept form. Okay. And what do we get here? This goes to we get um, Okay, one third y minus three. And this one here, if we do the same thing, we get y equals, this is going to be two sixth y minus 3. And notice that this, is this can be reduced to one third. So this has this, a line has, these two lines have the same slope and the same intercept. That tells us that not only are they rising at the same rate in this case, but they also intersect at the exact same point, which means the lines are right on top of each other. So both of these equations represent the same line. So they intersect everywhere, okay, at all points on both lines. So that means that this one has an infinite number of solutions, okay? In fact, you can see that one of these, if you look at this one here, you can see 
that this line here is really just a multiple of this line. Because if I factor out a negative 2, I get x minus 3y is equal to 9. So this line here is just a multiple of this line. And so when you have a line that is just a multiple of another line, they're, they're the same line. You're not changing anything. So they have the exact same solution set. Okay, so that's another way of seeing this. Okay? <clears throat> now, one more way of seeing that they're the same line is just to plot some points. Plot the, uh, plot the y, x and y intercepts and then plot a third point. Okay? And if you do that, you'll get that all three, all three points will be on both lines. And if that happens for two straight lines, again, this is for two straight lines, right? If you have two straight lines and you have the y-intercepts are the same, the x-intercepts are the same, and then you do a test point, and the third point is also on both lines, then they have to be the same line. Okay? So, for example, in this... This one here, if we just start it over, and we had this, then all we have to do is find the y-intercept for both of them, right? So in this case here, Okay, so here, if we want the y-intercept, we plug this zero here. So y will equal what? Negative 3. So we get 0, negative 3 here. And if we plug in 0 here, we get y equals, again, negative 3. So we get 0, negative 3 here. Then if we do the x-intercept, we make y equal to 0, and here we get x equal to 9. Oops. So then we get an x-intercept of 9 comma 0. And here if we make 0, if we make y 0, we get what? We get x equal to 9 again. And then if we pick a test point, well, let's pick a test point. Let x equal 1. So if x equals 1 here, what do we get? Well, we subtract 1 from both sides. We get 8. And then we divide by negative 3. We get y equals what? Negative 8 thirds. So we get 1 comma negative 8 thirds. So let's do the same thing here. We plug in 1 for x. Okay, so that's going to give us negative 2. Add 2 to both sides, and we get negative 16, and we get y equals uh, negative 16 over 6. Well, negative 16 over 6 reduces to negative 8 thirds. So we get the same thing, 1 comma negative 8 thirds. And then, therefore, that shows us as well that they're the same line. So what, do we, what does this mean? It means that this is what we call a dependent system. Or a conditional system is another term, but the textbook uses dependent. So this is called a dependent system or um, conditional. because it's dependent on whatever one of the values is. If I make x1, that, then y is dependent on whatever I make x. So if I make x2, that's going to change y. If I make x3, it's going to change y for both of them. So that's why we call it a dependent system. So if there are no solutions, inconsistent. If there are an infinite number of solutions, like in this case, we call it dependent. If there's only one solution, um,
Oh, I forget what we call that. But anyway, uh, is it consistent or, hold on a second. So they're called, okay, so they're called consistent and dependent, okay? So if there's only one unique solution, then we call those consistent and dependent, okay? If there's no solution, then it's inconsistent, and if there's an infinite number of solutions, we call them dependent, okay? Have a great day.